In this video, I'm going to go over how to identify arbicolinae, voles, etc., skulls. So, as I mentioned in my overview video that hopefully you just watched, we can look at the number of reentrant angles, little pokey parts of the tooth sticking inwards towards the tongue. And depending on how many they have, we can categorize them into three main groups. So here, Cinetomys borealis, that's the, um, the lemming, there are none, no reentrant angles. If you look at it under a microscope, you see that that part of the tooth kind of facing the tongue is smoothed out and you don't have these sharp angle extensions sticking inward. In contrast, if you look at these two, Lemniscus curtatus and Cinetomys intermedius, you see one, two, three angles sticking inwards towards the tongue. These letters here, anterior, forward, posterior, back, buccal, cheek side, lingual, tongue side. So on the tongue side, that would be third molar, the last molar, upper molar, that's why it's capitalized, one, two, three reentered angles. These two species fall into that category. Then, these species over here, we have one, two, three, four reentrant angles. So this is again my drawing of a top-down prismatic teeth. So you see the outline around all the little, little teeth parts. We see one, two, three, four reentrant angles sticking inwards towards the tongue. So now let's back up over here. We have no reentrant angles. We know it's Synoptomys borealis, it's the only one, so we figured it out. We know that skull. For these two then here, that have similar third molars, what we want to look at is kind of a top-down view of the skulls. What we see with Phenicomys intermedius is it looks like a regular vole skull. With Lemniscus cretatus, the auditory boulet and mastoid are swollen so that the back of the skull is a little bit bulged out and more of a boxy look. I'm going to try holding these up side by side. So I'm, I'm holding on to the snouts. What you should see is on the one on the left, yeah, the back of the skull is kind of bulging out more than this one. This one's bulging, this one is not. And let me hold up one other just random bowl for comparison. So this one is larger, but this one relative to, for its size is a little bulgier. But you sh what you should do is first look at the number of branch angles, then look at the skull to distinguish these two apart. All right. Oh, and I need to mention on Dactrus of Ethicus. This one you should probably split off before you look at the teeth because it's just so big that you should know this is not a regular bowl. So even without counting the number of teeth, you should probably split this one off sooner to know, aha, this is the, the muskrat. Now if it's something small, then worry about the teeth more. Here just know like, aha, it has bowl teeth and it's big. All right, so then for these species that have four reentrant angles, These top two are pretty easy to tell apart. Myoides gaperi, so this is the red back bowl, has this abrupt mid palate edge or cliff. And what I mean by that is, for example, looking at this on Dacia's Bethicus, this is the palate, and then here it like falls off, and there's a sharp line and then you get to this lower part there. On a lot of the small voles, it's not that way. But for myodes gaperi, it is. And 
which maybe I can try showing this. Hopefully you were able to see that, that there was a really sharp clip that you don't see in the other small molds over here. So that's one that is easy to distinguish from, say, these guys. Right, but Richard Sony is the other easy one because it's so big. So here is a Microsoft Richard Sony skull in the kind of glass case versus the Microsoft Moxmas that's a regular size. So this one here, Microsoft Richard Sony, is 30 to 38 um, millimeters for greatest length. All the regular other bowls are less than 30. So let's say it has four reentrant angles and it's too small to be Richardsoni, and it doesn't have this abrupt edge. Then what? Well, for Pennsylvanicus, we can look at M2. So this is the second upper molar. We've been talking about the third upper molar, now we're gonna go to the one in front of it. And if you look at the second upper molar, what you see is towards the end, right before you get to this third molar below it, there's this nice tidy little circular loop. And you see that on Microsoft Pennsylvanicus, you don't see it on Microsoft Monsonus or Logicomus. So looking at that posterior loop at the end, tongue side, back end of the second molar. Let's say it has four inch angles, too small to be Richard Sony, doesn't have this clip, doesn't have the loop, well, then um, we're kind of stuck at these two. Um, these skulls are indistinguishable as far as we're concerned. So if you want to know if it's Microtus Machnus or Microtus Longicotus, you would need to have the pelt also, which we may give you. If you don't have the pelt, you would know, well, it's just Microtus sp, some species. But if you had the pelt and the skull, then you could figure out which of these it is.